Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of American popular culture. We've been talking about culture in the 1980s and in this lecture we turn to a vital aspect of that culture, the resurgence of conservatism, a celebration of capitalism, and the prominence of a generation sometimes called the yuppies. After the social, political, and international convulsions of the 60s and 70s, and in the wake of the Civil Rights Movement, the Women's Movement, the Anti-War Movement, and the crisis of the presidency in the Watergate scandal, many Americans embraced a new conservatism in the 80s. A nostalgia for simpler and quieter times prevailed among many older Americans, evoking a special fondness for the halcyon days of the 1950s. This nostalgia was embodied in the President, Ronald Reagan, and First Lady, Nancy Reagan. Reagan's policies enforced limited government, a celebration of individual entrepreneurship and capitalism, and a return to the forefront of traditional gender roles, marriages, and households. While these policies benefited most middle and upper class white Americans, minorities in many instances suffered and the economy suffered serious recessions in 1982 and 1987. Popular culture in the 80s, especially movies and television, reflected this dichotomy in American society. Particularly prominent in Reagan's America were the yuppies, young urban professionals. Overwhelmingly white, the yuppies were 20 and 30-somethings making their way in 1980s America often forging careers in the big cities. This movement was fortified by the rise of the so-called Sun Belt, the migration of many Americans out of the older industrial cities of the North and Midwest, sometimes referred to as the Rust Belt, to the pleasanter climate and more tax-friendly regions of the South and West Coast. States like Florida, California, and Arizona boomed. Urban centers like Miami, Atlanta, Phoenix, and Los Angeles thrived, and even those of modest means took to playing golf and tennis at the rapidly proliferating country clubs. The yuppies took advantage of the prosperity that Reagan's America afforded them. They drove sports cars, indulged in the growing food and wine culture, especially of the big cities, and embraced the latest fashions, which in the 80s often meant pastels and whites. Many television shows of the 80s reflected the growing prominence of yuppies. Perhaps the most popular was Miami Vice, set in the vast metropolis of Miami in the midst of the drug-ridden, hedonistic 80s. On the one hand, a traditional cop show with police agents Tubbs and Crockett hunting down bad guys, Miami Vice was also a representation of pop culture of the day. The soundtrack from season one was a best-selling album featuring many of the most popular rock artists of the era. And the fashion sensibilities became a cliché for 80s menswear, pastel colors and white suits. There must be a crocket and tubs at every 80s party. Another popular crime drama was Magnum P.I., featuring Tom Selleck as private investigator Thomas Magnum. Set in Oahu, Hawaii, Magnum P.I. featured many visual elements similar to Miami Vice, but typically the storylines were less gritty and violent, and Magnum's wry humor lent a lighter air to the show than Miami Vice. The show secured Selleck as one of the decade's leading sex symbols and made him a television fixture to this day. Magnum P.I. ran from 1980 to 1988 and was one of the top-rated shows on television for most of that run. Reagan's America also had its comic hero in Alex P. Keaton, played by Michael J. Fox in the show Family Ties. The show first aired in 1982 and elevated teen actor Fox to stardom. A modern and less offensive take on the family dynamic of All in the Family, Family Ties featured parents who were former hippies raising an all-in Reagan Republican in their son, Alex. The episodes followed a simple formula. Alex embarks on some entrepreneurial scheme, usually at the expense of others in the show. The scheme falls apart, and Alex apologizes for his wrongdoings in the end. 
In the wrong hands, Alex's character would have come across as dark or even evil. But Fox carried off the role with comedic charisma. The New York Times described it as greed with the face of an angel. For eight years, Family Ties was one of the top shows on television. Popular comedies of the 80s often took a stab at the popularity of the yuppie image. The enormously popular Cheers was set in a Boston pub. Its lovable cast of characters included Fraser Crane, a pompous but likable psychiatrist played by Kelsey Grammer. Norm Peterson, a part-time accountant and fixture at the bar, played by George Wendt. And Cliff Clavin, a postal worker and trivia savant, played by John Ratzenberger. At the center of the story was the bartender and washed-up major leaguer Sam Malone, played by Ted Danson, and his attempt to woo the barmaid Diane Chambers, played by Shelley Long. Common storylines involved their romance going awry for any number of reasons, and Sam's dreams of wealth and grandeur being dashed. They looked, perhaps longingly, at the yuppies who basked in wealth and success that they would never have. Running from 1982 to 93, Cheers was one of the most popular shows on television throughout its run, and its series finale was viewed by nearly 40% of the country one of the most watched programs in television history. As the decade drew to a close, the ultimate rejection of the yuppie lifestyle appeared in The Simpsons, an irreverent and bawdy animated comedy show that premiered in 1989 and remains on the air today more than 30 years later. The Simpsons originated as a comedy short in 1987 on The Tracy Ullman Show, a popular comedy variety show airing on Fox Television. The Simpsons has been so popular it hardly warrants description now, but the husband and father, Homer Simpson, is the antithesis of wealth and success. Wife and mother, Marge, is loving but simple-minded. Bart Simpson, the son, is mischievous and wayward, and the daughter, Lisa, provides the most redeeming character, as she is bright, talented and ambitious. Her moments of enlightenment prevent the show from becoming completely drowned in cringeworthy, offensive, and politically incorrect misadventures. At the same time, The Simpsons was the perfect antidote for a nation that by the end of the 1980s was awash in phony, pastel, idealized visions of a life that for most Americans didn't exist. In the next lecture, we'll take a final look at some of the dominant trends in 1980s culture, a decade with a strong nostalgic pull even today.